We all know Kente. Okay. Start again? Okay. Okay. So it's great to have the one and only Nana Atta Pokuajimai here with us this evening. Um, Nana, I'm grateful that you decided to come support me this evening for this Kente Culture Story documentary film premiere. So what's your take on this documentary and why you decided to attend? Well, obviously, I decided to attend because this documentary would, first of all, serve as a marketing strategy for Ghanaians and Ashantis. As you know, Kente is one of the insignia or symbols of the Asante people. Right. And Kente is um, the cloth that depicts the true and rich culture of the people of Asante. Asante, as we know, dates back to the 16th century. And uh, our forebears, right from the founder of the nation, Keno Seiti, to the first, who founded this great nation of Asante together with his friend, Confanoche, used these cloth. And we had the royal weavers with different designs. Uh, as you can see, these are all different designs of Kinte. And this will be the first of this kind of a documentary to showcase a rich culture as Asante people, to showcase what goes into um, the Kente cloth. And every Kente has its meaning. Um, there were two that came here, Junis Juneso and Obinche Obi Equine. The two that they were, the last one talks about forgiveness. Right. Of course, as human beings, to air is human right. and to forgive is divine. Mm -hmm. And our forebears used these designs to tell a story. Right. Used them in folk tales, and people from Bonre, Adamase, were were very rich and very cultured in doing these kente. And so, Nanama, I, I, I think it is a step in the right direction. You've, you've taken a bold decision to premiere and to sell Asante or the kente cloth to the outside world. There are so many Asantes or Ghanaians living here who do not know the meaning of the cloth they wear. So after this documentary, I think it will go beyond the shores of Ghana for people to actually appreciate what the kente stands for. Kente is, is not only worn in Ghana, but it started from here. And if you go to neighboring countries like Cote d'Ivoire, right. they wear kente. Nigeria, they wear it. But uh, Asante, as I told you, before the Anglo uh, Asante Wars, Asante extended to present day Cote d'Ivoire. Right. And that's why you go to Cote d'Ivoire and you see the Baoli people and other people who migrated from here wearing kente. So I, I, I am I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to the organizers, especially you, and also to all those who've, who've helped you along the way to do this documentary. And it will go away. This should not be the first or the last, and it should, it should urge you to do more documentary, to tell our story. Right. Asante has a lot of history. It has a lot of tradition, but it's about time that we, we sell our story. Years past, we had oral tradition and oral history. Not until probably the 17th century when you started people writing about Shanti history. Mm -hmm. But these documentaries will also go a long way to tell the story of the Ashanti people and how bold, how brave, and how ingenuity they were in coming up with this lovely cloth called Kente. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Nana. I think that pretty much sums it up. Princess, do you have anything yes. to ask Nana before um, we just, just one more thing. Now, you've touched on the potential socioeconomic benefits of Kente. You've touched on how Kente is used as a tool to pass on history. And you've expressed some of your hopes for this documentary, for people watching when they finally get the chance to watch it. Now, as we are the privileged few who get to watch this documentary today, it might take a little while longer before they get to experience it. So for people watching this interview right now, if you could tell them one thing about Kente that you would like them to take away from this interview, what would that be? Well, I, I think I did mention that Kente, the cloth Kente itself, speaks volumes. The Kente cloth brings to bear the way of life of the Asante people. It tells a story, proverbially, 
And you know, I, I should say this, culture is the way a group of people live. So it, it tells us how the people of Asante lived then and now. And if you, you would follow the history of Kente cloth, we, we are not reinventing anything. It's just that all the old designs go out of fashion and they come again. Like Oyoko Mine, um, Ajunso, Ajunso. These are, these are patterns or designs that have, that have always evolved around um, the 16th, 17th century. And now you see additions on. You go to places like Tilbebi, which, which was not originally um, a niche for uh, Kente. As I did mention, it was in Tonso, um, Adamas, and, and Bunri. Those were places that were noted for Kente. But because over the years, the past, present, and future, all believe that Kente as a cloth uh, depicts a lot of our way of living, um, a lot of Ashantis and even non Ashantis have come to appreciate this Kente. So, what it tells us is that it, it has gone beyond generations and it still stood the test of time because there has been westernization. Uh, uh, most of us were, what should I say, leocolonized when we went to Achimota or Prince of Wales. But even in Achimota, every Sunday you were made to wear cloth. And on Founders Day, we, we did what we call tribal dances. So Asantis would do the, and they, they, they wanted you to wear your kente cloth together with the other tribes. So even in the phase of westernization, kente was not thrown to the back. It's through the test of time. You go to other countries, they all had um, cloth, or they, they had symbols or way of living. But they were not fortunate like the people of Asante or Ghana, and they have been westernized, and they don't even, they've forgotten their history and tradition. So what I want everybody to know is that the Ashanti people are a proud nation. They are proud people who would never, even in the face of colonization or, or wars, would never relent in giving away their culture or traditions to take somebody's own. And we are even going to build on this. I mean, this is a, a step in the right direction. And I, as I said, I was very privileged for, for Nanama to undertake this heroine activity to do the documentary. And beyond that, I think that it will portray that there are so many things that Asante has to offer. There are so many things that people did not know that they are going to know from this documentary and to tell the story of Asante, that Asante has gone through the mill, it has stood the test of time, and they will continue to be great from till eternity. So that's what I think. Very, very well said. Now we'll be heading back into the cinemas to watch the Kente Culture Story documentary. And if we can learn anything from the Kente fabric itself, it's that we should stay true to ourselves but be also ready to evolve and change with the times. So we'll see you right after this. I'm very happy. I'm very happy you gave us an interview.